Uh, many people think that marriage is going to give them everything they want, and we go in with that premise in marriage, and then all of a sudden things fall apart, and we don't realize why they fell apart. Well, there are many reasons for that, and our next guest helps her clients through that. Her name is Marion Mead. She is a marriage coach with Marriage Mind Coaching. Welcome to the show, Marion. Great to have you here. I'm so happy. And, and do you believe that, that, that so many people think that it is the be-all and end-all, and because of that mindset, we maybe jump in too quickly into our relationships? I not only believe that, I did it myself, you guys. <laughs> we can, <laughs> yeah, we also have done Barrett that, and I might yes. Have done that as so well. we're speaking from the same uh, we had experience. We our starter marriage, and then, you know, we moved on. That's right. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what goes wrong usually in marriages, do you think? What, what's some of the main reasons why a marriage goes wrong? Well, couples think that the romance phase is going to be what the marriage phase is and in the romance phase we all know what that looks like you've got stars in your eyes your heart goes pitter-patter when you think about your partner when the phone rings you jump for it you can't stand to be apart they expect that's going to happen in marriage but the first thing that happens in marriage or even prior is you you go through a disillusionment mm -hmm. phase and this is a predictable phase that every couple goes through that's when you start noticing like oh my gosh he slurps his soup she's right. so bad with money <laughs> reads the newspaper before i do and doesn't put it back the way it's supposed to be <laughs> am i right here we go there's just a few maybe personal maybe not examples <laughs> <laughs> but you say education is the key when Absolutely. it comes to when it comes to, in what manner how do we educate ourselves about relationships well, when I first start working with clients, if they're engaged, they're going to get married, I let them know that, you know, they need to talk about what are they expecting out of the marriage. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, are, are you going to have kids? And if you are, how many? Who's going to look after the kids? Are you going to buy a house? Are you going to rent? How much time are you going to spend with the in-laws? And are you a clean freak and your partner isn't? How are you going to manage that? Who's going to do the chores? All those mm -hmm. kind of things. And also recognizing that, that that disillusionment phase that I mentioned is, it's essential, it's healthy, and it's normal mm -hmm. in order to get to the bliss phase, which comes after that. But a lot of couples panic. They're just like filled with anxiety. They figure, oh my God, I've made a mistake. Who is this turkey? <laughs> That's <laughs> appropriate. It. No, she really, yeah, she meant it. She's a bit of a turkey. <laughs> Who is this tur turkey that I married? We've got nothing in common, and mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how I got stuck in there because I'm awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I once interviewed um, Peter Post, who is the great grandson of Emily Post. Okay. You know, the etiquette yeah. lady yeah. from way, way back, and he's written a bunch of uh, books, and one of them was called Essential Etiquette for Couples. And his premise is that if we keep our good manners, like picking up your socks on your side of the bed, Joe, um, <laughs> and, um, you know, um, not passing wind in front of each other and just going, hey, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> part of the breakdown. Uh, just right? basically good manners, right? And, um, and, and because it shows respect. And that he says that if we showed good manners that we have when we're dating, if we show the same kind of respect and solicitude when we're dating, we would have a lower divorce rate. Do you think that's true? A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree. It's the tried and true stuff that people think maybe is from back in Granny's day, but it's absolutely true. We all have a need to be appreciated. Yes. And part of that appreciation is about respect. We want to feel respected. And when that's not there, that's when you have a breakdown mm -hmm. for sure. I would, as well, Marion, would it even be just looking after yourself? <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like sometimes we get in a relationship, we're like, oh, they don't care what I look like, you yeah. know, uh, you know, we're, we're in this together, and it, we kind of let ourselves go, perhaps, a, a little bit, too. Yeah, absolutely, and when you think about it, like, in that romance phase, what do you do when you're getting all dressed up, you're doing your hair, you're going to the gym, you're going out dancing, you're doing fun things together, yeah, you're right. having lots of laughs. Then you get married and you're schlepping around in your <laughs> The sweatpants. gym membership is cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you parked on the couch eating <laughs> Cheetos, you know. No, it's true. Uh, I love that you brought this in because this mm. is an idea that you have uh, a, a journal for couples. Uh, describe the, the, the purpose of, of this journal. 
So no matter whether couples are coming to me during that phase when the disillusionment phase, when they're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm out of here, or whether they're coming for marriage preparation, I give everybody a journal to write in, um, mm -hmm. and it's called the Partner Appreciation Journal. I like them to, I, I send them home and s tell them, spend an hour, sit down, and write everything you appreciate about your partner in there. Every awesome thing they've done, everything you respect about them, everything you're, you're proud about them for, put it all down. And after that, every day, mm -hmm. write down something you appreciate about them because that is what's going to build up those feelings of love for your partner. You read that and you remember and not... Mm -hmm. Is it just for you personally or do, would you, rec do you share it with your partner? Share, share, <laughs> let your partner See, know how much you love this them. This is similar to what we did at dinner the other night with yes, you and Monica that's and Joe. Right. So in, in our family, we have a thing called the reasons I love you. And Joe and I send each other three reasons on Facebook every day. And Aww. we have done for the past six years or something. Oh. But they're very specific to what's going on. And, you know, we might have had an argument. And, you know, I love you because you let me have the last word. And I know that was hard. <laughs> it's funny. I, uh, but yeah, I like and it. And we sat down and did it at dinner the other mm -hmm. night. And it was, everybody just feels so good yeah. at the end of it. And you feel appreciated and cherished. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's this, uh, Marion, there's almost a human nature of not doing that enough. Not even <laughs> for our close relationship, but any relationship that we have. We always seem to point out the negative rather than emphasize the, the positive. Mm -hmm. It's part of our, our, our wiring that we naturally focus on the negative. It's mm -hmm. just a natural thing. We actually have to train ourselves out of that, and that's what writing in the book does. It gets you getting onto another um, circuit in your brain. Resets your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, resets it. And so, yeah. yeah. What the tendency is, though, is for us to criticize and nitpick our, at our partner. And if you want to fizzle that sizzle, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Don't be fizzling the Don't sizzle. Don't fizzle the sizzle. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Jay sizzle. Uh, what have you got here? You brought the CD along as well. You had mentioned that uh, you were going to bring this. Yeah. So I just put together a, a little um, audio um, called Wide Awake Marriage. It's a little bit of an introduction to marriage preparation, what to expect mm -hmm. in a relationship. So I talk about um, loving yourself, about being a mindful participant in your marriage. You don't want to just, you know, get in the car to you, you know, on that marriage journey and just be oblivious to what's going on. You be a participant in, in what you want to have happen. Um, it talks about commitment, about intimacy, about sexuality, all kinds of different things like that. That it's a it's a really great introduction. And I'm going to be speaking at the Ottawa wedding show on Saturday and Sunday, and I am going to be giving out these. Um, Audios for free. Fantastic. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Free. We like free. So, yeah. yeah. It's my favorite four-letter word that I'm allowed to say on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marion, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure having you on the show. Some great tips and advice. Yes, you could visit you. Uh, marriagemindedcoaching.com to find out more information and see somebody if you need some professional help before it's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, don't go away. We're back talking with the Canadian Hearing Society and some of the challenges that the deaf and those that are hard of hearing have when it comes to employment. We'll be back with that right after this.